in this last section, the goal is, firstly, we want to make sure we know our basics of density and pressure. What are those? How to calculate them? Then we will go to combining these ideas and derive what we call the equation for pressure in fluids. Once we are done with this goal, we are able to derive the equation and use it, then we are ready to talk about upthrust force, which will be the end of the chapter by then. Okay, so hang in there. I'm going to go through this little journey to get to the end. First question of today. Let's say I'm super rich. I have three types of gold, same purity. If you look at it, the first one is a gold bar. Mm, that's my pen. Okay, this first one is a gold bar. Same purity, I assume. Shaped like a rectangle, trapezium kind of almost. I don't know what's the name of it. Cuboid, maybe. Anyway, the second one are like coins, shaped like circles. They're much lighter than a gold bar. And the third one is a nugget, odd shape. Weird, um, weird volume. Masses, who knows what. So among all these, they have all different mass and different volume. How do we know they're all gold? I mean, obviously you can see it's gold color, but how do we know? Is there a, some measurement that's the same? Well, the mass is all different, so we can't use that. Volume, we cannot use that because, you know, the bar has big volume, the coin has small volume, so we need some other way to measure it. The answer, as you may have guessed, is density. Density, no matter what mass, what, more, what mass, what volume, if it's that same stuff, it has the same density. Okay, so your water can be water on the floor, water on the container, water in your body, but it's still water. It will have the same density. So in this case, density of gold is the same no matter what shape or what size it is. Okay, so this is what special thing. Density is what we can say. It's unique lah for that uh, substance. Because I was going to say it can be element, but then it can also be the molecules or compounds or different things. So let's say for that substance, density is the same. So if you have copper, copper everywhere, density is the same, no matter the shape and size. Okay. So that's the main thing about density. So at A levels, uh, density, we define it as mass per unit volume. It's basically just describing the equation in English. So to remember the equation, you need to recall that density, we use the Greek word rho so rho goes like this rho it's not a p ah rho r h o that's how you pronounce it rho your boat rho rho equals to mass so we use m for that usually per unit volume so we use v big v ah i'll just put this to different shape so this is the key equation you want to remember for density which is also the definition very handy now what are the units of this Usually, uh, there's no special unit for it. I mean, if I can name it, I'll call it, uh, maybe I'll give it a unit, Ellie. That's my own name. So, one Ellie means one density thing. Anyway, that doesn't happen, sadly. So, let's, let's use the SI base unit. So, let's see, it'll be mass, kg. Kg per Volume, we use meter cube, so kg m negative 3. This is the unit that we want to use for density. You may use a different thing in chemistry, like grams uh, per cm cube. It also can, lah, but let's try to standardize everything to SI units, so that when we, ca when we calculate it with forces and other things, then it will all come together nicely. Okay, so uh, most of the... I was going to say, oh, density is usually constant for solids, liquids, but gas uh, may not be constant. So let me make a note. Note. Density can be constant. Density usually is constant for liquids and solids. I should say solid and liquid. Okay, so solid, maybe you have a block of copper. If it's pure copper, then you have a certain density. If it's liquid, a jar of water, then you have the same density. But gas, why is gas not exactly, does not exactly have the same constant uh, density? Well, the reason is this. You see, 
density depends on mass and volume, right? For gas, let's say, uh, a round container of gas, compressible container, got gas inside. Yes, the mass is fixed, number of molecules, weight and all that, but then the volume of gas changes a lot. It changes very easily too. So you can compress gas and then you release gas, then how density change? Oh. So for gases, we usually don't worry so much about their density. Uh, but if, it's, if the value is given to us in the question, we'll just use it. Okay? But don't worry too much about gases. There's a whole chapter in A2 just about gases, pressure and all that stuff. We will save that for later. Okay. Now it would be really nice if density questions were just as simple as that, just mass over volume done. But in real life, if I say, what's the density of this calculator? Wow, then you think, got plastic, got metal, got glass. How? How do you find the density? So that's what we call composite density when there are different, different densities all put together to form one object. Here's an example. In a large container in an oil refinery, three oils all mixed together. The mixture has one oil, two oil, three oil. Okay, what's the density of the mixture? So, you cannot just say, oh, I just find average of this density, can you know? Eh, hey, no, 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 no. Cannot, cannot. What you need to do is, you need to think about how each uh, component contributes to the, the whole mixture. So how we can do that is, we can combine fractional uh, densities. Combine. Fractional, let's see, this is one way to do it, okay? Fractional densities. Kind of like combining percentage uncertainty kind of stuff. But to do that, we need to use the, we need to find the volumes of these fellas. So let's say I find volume. Uh. So, okay, how to find volume again? Density is mass over volume. So I need to do, okay, mass over volume. So 1,200 over uh, the density, 1100, will give me the volume. So the first fellow's volume is about 1.09 uh, meter cube. Okay, then I do the second one, 1500 divided by 860. So 1.74 meter cube. Then 4000 divided by 910. That's about 4.40 meter cube. Okay, so that's the volume of each uh, oil in the container. So container got this much, lah, this much of this oil, this much of that, that oil. What is the volume of the whole container? Well, you can do a rough estimate. 109, 1.74 plus 4.4. It's roughly about... 7.23 meters cube. That's roughly the volume of the whole container. So, if I want to find the fractional density, I can actually do that by saying 1.09 over the total volume, 7.23, times its density. Okay, so that's the first one, using the volume. By the way, if you want to do percentage, uh, 1.09 over 7.23, is roughly 15%. So this first oil contribution is roughly 15%. And you can do that for all the oils as well to see how much each of them contribute. Okay, so use volumes. So uh, I didn't, I'm not going to use percentage to combine the, the fractional density because percentage means you have to add times 100%, times 100. So a bit troublesome, so no need lah. Just use this one. Okay, so then we have that one, the first one. Second one will be 1.74 over the total times, what's the density? 860. And the last one, 4.4. Wow, a lot of this oil over the total, 7.23 times 910. Then we can calculate everything. I'm going to pause the video and calculate. So we got roughly about uh, 926. Point six uh, kg per meter cube. So that's how I can combine the fractional density of all the different oils. Now some of you say, oh I missed this one very long, got, short, got another shorter way. Yes, there's another way to do it. I'll just give you a heads up. 
uh, depending on what info the question gives you, you can choose either way. Lah. So in this, set, in this setting, in this question, it might be a little easier to do this. If you want to find the mixture's density, okay, what you can do is you use total mass over total volume. So the total word is important. So in our case, we can do 1,200 plus 1,500 plus 4,000 divided by the total volume. We already calculate that to be 7.23 something something. I lost my decimals. I should have kept the decimals. Anyway, so we do 1,200 plus 1,500 plus 4,000 divided by 7.23. I get about 926.7. Maybe the earlier one I didn't write. So it's a little bit different. Ideally, you keep all your decimals, but I rounded off to uh, two decimal places. So a little bit off. So in the answer, I should choose 927 because it's a uh, round off to three significant figures. So just remember, when there's composite, you want to be either thinking about how you can combine each uh, fractional density or you want to think of total mass, total volume. So depending on what info you're given, Maybe easier to do one or the other. Okay, so just a quick note. Mm, the first one is about 15%. Second one, 7.23. That one's about 24%. Okay, so I'll add here, this is about 24%. And the last one, oh, I bet got a lot of co a big contribution. 7.23 times 100. Woo! That is 60%. So 60% is this all number 3. 60.9 lah. off. So this is about 60.9% contribution. So if you see percentages, you could use the fractional density method and combine densities. Or you could use the other one, but you need to find total mass and things like that. Okay? So that's this composite density kind of question.